Hello, this is Scott. So welcome to my YouTube series on advanced analytics and data science. So today we're talking about Statistica, um, uh, hands-on really, uh, part of the Statistica series. So I hope you've joined me previously, but just to let you know what I do is I cover a variety of different platforms and I usually focus on one of two themes. One is a higher level view of some of the problems um, that data science can help you with, or either hands-on application, and that's what today is. Um, and the platform that we're using today is Statistica, and I'm showing you how to use the Data Health Check node um, in Statistica. So with that, if you open up Statistica and open one of the example data sets, what we have is we have um, we're going to start with messy data, so you can replicate this. It's within the uh, examples folder of Statistica, and you can see here, by the way, this is one way that you can annotate um, data sets and everything else. You can put information up in the header of a Statistica spreadsheet. Um, so you can see here that I've got 19,971 cases or rows. I've got 24 columns or variables. And one of the things that, that you'll see is that when I have a spreadsheet up and I'm looking for the data health check node, you won't find it. Because the data health check node is applicable to a workspace. So if we go in here and we say, give me a new workspace, and I'm going to start off with a blank uh, template, and then I'm going to just throw down this data set that I have into the canvas. And then now I go to the data tab. Aha, there's the data health check node. So if you're looking for it, you don't see it, but you're in a spreadsheet, make sure that you have a workspace up. Okay, so I'm, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop that data health check node on the canvas and and so I clicked on that and it appears right there so what this is is a compendium of several things that are often wrong with data let's take a look if I open up double click or click on the cog of this node I get the parameter specification for the node the first thing is um, this this note and variables so let me select what variables I want. Easiest way to do it is just select, I'm going to select all for this example. And then you can see that you have a number of variable selection options. Um, you know, you can treat how much the classification goes through. Does it go through the full set before it classifies a variable as continuous or categorical, um, et cetera. I won't go into every, every single option here because there's so many of them, and I want to make this brief and, and move along, but you can experiment with this front panel. The main thing is this is where you select the variables that you want to work with. Then sparse data. If I don't want to run it, I can uncheck this, and there's another way at the very end, options, whether, whether I want to run any of these tests or not. But let's look at the first test, sparse data. I am going to run it. And um, it will allow you to determine sparsity based on percentage of missing data in a column or in a row. So here's the column variable. I'm looking at 10% in the column and 10% in the row. And if it has more than missing data than that, it's going to determine that row or column as a sparse row or column. Um, you can also do this iteratively. So you can keep repeating. Um, until all of the, the cases have been removed, because obviously once you um, remove something, it's going to affect the counts um, in both the columns and the rows. You can also identify categorical uh, variables that have fewer levels, right? So I can look at um, categories that are that are sparse as well, um, and so again, more options to define sparsity. These are all configurable. The defaults work very well. 
outliers. I can do outliers by case standard deviations. Here I'm doing it by five standard deviations. I could specify this is three, up or down, um, the default's five. And then I also had this two key box plot. So if I hover over it, it gives me the details for the calculation of this and, and what is considered an outlier by the two key definition. Okay. Then the categorical variables as well, right? So if I have a categorical variable with less than 5% um, of the, the variables in, in a particular category, that's considered an outlier as well, okay? So very um, sparse number of um, categories um, within that variable. Uh, nominal values, uh, a nominal value that, that appears 5% or less. Um, then the invariant is looking at the variability within a column. So if a column doesn't have much variability, it's really not very useful in machine learning. That's the reason this is, this is here. And I can calculate that based on continuous variables by the CV value, coefficient of variation, right? And there's the formula right there. For categorical, I can look at um, that I want, if it has greater than 99% of the, the same nominal values, then um, I'm gonna consider that a redundant, uh, I'm sorry, an invariant column as well. Um, this is a way of eliminating data through um, cleaning up data that doesn't add any value. Plus it can perform um, some problems with, with models, um, especially here in the, in the redundancy uh, case. Again, this is to get rid of redundant columns, the multicollinearity problem. Um, also model training, it reduces the time to train up models. Um, there's just no point in bringing these um, downstream when you do your model building. So this allows you to, to define that. And so the redundancy check here, um, you know, simple correlation, Pearson uh, 0.9 or R squared um, for continuous versus categorical uh, 0.9. And then for categorical versus categorical variables, 90% uh, for Kramer's fee. Um, you have an option to, to generate some color maps and things like that as well. And then lastly, oh, by the way, so think about the math behind this redundancy check, right? So it's two to the n uh, computations. So if you have a very large set of uh, data, you might want to be careful running this, right? Because it's pairwise. It's comparing every, every column. So again, it's two to the n um, possible comparisons that are, that's happening. And then again, I can quickly check if I don't want to run that redundancy check, for example, uh, if I've got a large data set um, and I'm not getting a cup of coffee, I might want to turn that off. Then the options for your output, you can display a report only. You can display the report and apply downstream cleaning. Let's do that. Um, if you want to, you can display the report and just mark the variables rather than apply the data cleaning. You can just mark those variables or you can just apply the, the cleaning only and not get the, uh, the report. And here's some graphics that you can grab as well, but that's pretty much the configuration um, for this. And if you haven't heard it from me before, if I want to click just the play button, it's going to run to this, this node right here, um, and we'll see the output there. Okay, so I paused the recorder for just a second um, while that ran, and it ran in about two, two and a half minutes. So the reporting documents are in the upper right of the node. So if I, they're also available, all the reporting documents. If I had 20, we can go to the reporting documents here, but I'll just click on the upper right here and see what the output is for this data health check um, node. So nice thing is it gives you a report um, overall. So I can look at the, and, that, and it tells me what 
my continuous variables are, what my categorical variables are. Um, it tells me that uh, categorical variables greater than 100 levels um, was customer ID. So customer ID obviously has, you know, 19,000 plus distinct uh, values, right? Um, so that's important. Credit score has 426 distinct values. Uh, and sparse data summary, um, complete cases, 98.51%. And you can look at the number of complete cases, the uh, cases with one missing observation, 1.49% uh, or 298 cases. Variables removed to due to sparseness, none cases, none outlier detection. The amount of credit had 19 outliers based upon our settings. Um, categorical uh, variables, here you can see balance of, of current account, 474. So, you know, we had pretty pretty strict settings and so we, we ended up re uh, removing a lot of the, the cases from here. Um, you know, I didn't realize this before I ran this, how dirty this set was, but essentially since I selected all the variables and um, I'm running those all with conditions, it's like a Bonferroni problem, um, a multiple inference problem, uh, because it's finding unique things wrong with the data and uh, eliminating, uh, I think it just eliminated every case ultimately. <laughs> And it did. Um, I apologize for that. Anyway, hopefully you get an idea of the report itself. Also here, this gives me a visual of what was removed by variable, why it was removed. So I removed all those columns. I would have removed those. The case summary uh, here, um, you can see uh, pairwise, uh, stats and case-wise stats, a missing data plot. You can see your credit scores missing quite a bit of data. Duration of credits missing some, and where this appears in in the row count of the data. Um, so, really, a lot of good information here. Uh, I just wanted to make you aware that this node existed. I apologize that I probably should have come up with uh, I should have come up with some subset in this messy data to uh to illustrate this on but anyway hopefully that was meaningful and um that's the data health check node next time we're going to be talking about filter and recode options so we'll be looking about ways to cleanse the data um but pretty much applies some of the same methods and, and in addition to a couple of other methods um but we'll have individual control over each one of those and um, the data that's pulled out. We'll see you next time.